Hi brothers and sisters, I hope you are doing well. My name is Pamela. For all my new subscribers, brothers and sisters in Christ, I know if you subscribe to me, it is because you are a fellow believer. And I thank you for joining me. And um, I just felt like I really needed to come on and talk with you guys. I've had an interesting past three days. As some of you know from my one of my last videos that I went on a three-day fast with um, the Fig Tree um, YouTube channel. And we were praying against the evil powers of darkness for the Halloween holiday. So I fasted from Friday until I, and I broke the fast this morning. And um, I just spent a lot of time in prayer. My fast, I didn't do the whole 24-hour food fast. I did from the time I wake up in the morning from like 7 to 7.30 until 8 o'clock at night. 8 o'clock at night. I would break the fast, and so I would eat something I ate, and then I'd go to bed, and I'd wake up in the morning, and I'd fast again from morning until 8 o'clock at night, and during them three days, I had a really, I had a lot of um, awesome time with the Lord. You've seen some of my videos where the Lord was speaking to me about different things, about healing, um, about Him showing me um you know, about him healing all things and that and not, um, no scripture you can find about going to a doctor except for the conversation he was having with the Pharisees to speak to them on their level about only the sick need a doctor, but he wasn't telling people to go to the doctor. So I know many of you probably have gone to the doctor or do go to the doctor. I'm not saying anything about that. I feel that it is between you and God and what um, you and him decide to do that is on you. I just, the Lord has just been opening my eyes to things. And so I'm viewing things in a whole new way than what I even used to. So with that being said, um, that was, I believe, on the very first day of my fast. He really had a lot to say during that day, and I shared that with you. The second day of my fast, um, he began speaking to me about free will, so I'm going to speak to you about that, and I'm bringing this to you because I really feel like I needed to. I believe that if the Lord felt it was necessary to speak to me about it, then it's necessary to speak to all you guys about it. And it wasn't anything that he said, no, I don't want you to. I felt like I was led to, so I'm bringing this to you. Um, so, he was speaking to me. How about, everybody wants free will. But people get mad when other people use their free will to do evil. And then they get mad at God and blame God and say, well, if God was so good, why does he allow this? Why does he allow that? And he was just speaking to me. I know there's a lot of different situations in the world. There's childhood cancer and leukemia and then there's people starving and there's this and there's that. Now, specifically... He was speaking to me about free will, how he gives everybody free will, and how um, some people get angry at God because some people use their free will to do evil, and it affects other people. And people get mad because they want to choose, they want their free will to do what they want to do, but they want to choose how other people use their free will. And God says it don't work like that. So he was just saying people want free will. They don't want to be limited to what their free will allows them to do. They want to do what they want to do. But yet they want to tell other people how they can use their free will. And then they want to blame God for other people using their free will for evil. Like murder, rape, 
all the evil stuff. So this is what the Lord was just speaking to me about. So he was talking about people trying to make conditions and, you know, and then <laughs> just, I don't know. So anyways, he was speaking to me about that. Then he was speaking to me about a lot of lazy servants, how he has a lot of lazy servants. And um, he showed me into the plans of the practices of Lucifer worship. And it was something um, I would. It's something I would never want to see again. Um, he gave me a vision. He gave me a vision into it and allowed me to see. Um, oh, there's a lot of evil that goes on. So, anyways, I'm not gonna um I'm not gonna share with you what he showed me because I don't want to talk about it. But it was giving me, he was helping me to know how to pray. So I began praying in the situation that he showed me. Um, and he was talking about how um, evil will get handed down through generational curses and open doors, family traditions. And he was showing me how the evil comes in. Um, evil spirits will come in through um, PTSD and different things, abuse and stuff like that. And uh, he was showing me how he had protected me. I went through my fair share. And uh, he protected me. And he's always given me a heart for a forgiveness. And um, he's really given me the ability to forgive like he does. And so I'm very thankful for that. Um, but he was speaking to me about how his lazy servants, how... There are many different kinds of servants. There are so servants who know what's going on in the world, but don't care. They're selfish. They think about themselves. They don't pray for other people. They just pray for their own selves and what they want and whine and cry, but they don't get what they want. There are servants who don't want to know what's going on in the world. They don't want to know. They just want to pray want to protect themselves, want to protect them, their own family, cover themselves with the hedge of protection, but they don't want to know what's going on in the world. And then you got the servants who see what's going on in the world, but don't want to say anything. And so he called them lazy servants. So, um, my goodness gracious. I'm just glad I was doing my part. I do not want to be considered a lazy servant, for sure. So he was just speaking to me about that. He Last night there was an opportunity. My husband and I were speaking, and my husband kind of felt like because I have some made some statements as far as um, speaking about a church being like a Pergamum church. Speaking about how sin is preached from the pulpit, my husband has said that I have judged. The scripture makes it clear that we are to call things out. It's not called judging. Paul and Timothy call people out by name and their sin and their church. Paul went in, or I, uh, Timothy. Went in there and straightened up the church of Corinth. He even talk was, was talking about the church of Corinth. There's people that, Paul called people out by name and about what was going what they were doing. So I don't know if you can hear my husband. I hope you can't. He's up there talking on the phone. He's loud. Um so anyways. The world has gotten so much more evil because God's people have sat down and kept their mouths shut way longer than they should. Evil is running rampant. He was showing me how churches should be healing stations for demonic activity. You cannot, he said, I only have a handful of churches that don't care what people think and will lay hands 
on the demonically possessed to cast demons off. He said people should not walk into a church and walk out with demons on them. Yet many churches don't want to touch the topic of demons because they're afraid of what it might look like. And the Lord is not happy about that. So he spoke to me about the laziness of that and how this world is full of demons. This world is filled with demons because the church has not stood up. And one of the things Jesus commanded us to lay hands on the sick and they will be healed, cast out demons. Sorry, I still have my hands on. Lay hands on the sick, cast out demons. And, um, what was another one? I know those two for sure. Um, I don't remember the third one, but I know that uh, lay hands on the sick and cast out demons were two major ones. And that's besides the fact of love your neighbor as yourself. I forget it's Monday. Telemarketers being calling at all hours. So anyways, so is what the Lord was speaking to me about. We should not be sitting down and being quiet when we are seeing false teachers, false pastors, teaching things that are against the word of God. We need to be standing up and saying something about it, calling it out, because look how many people are going to hell because people don't stand up and say something about the sin and uh, they don't say something about People are sugarcoating things or they're um, afraid to say something. I had a conversation last night and the topic was, I just tell them if that's what you believe, that's okay. No, that's not. Christians should never say, if that's what you believe, that's okay. Because that's condoning what goes against the word of God. Your words should be more like, if that's what you believe, then whatever. Or if that's what you believe, then there's nothing I can do about that. But I'm going to tell you the truth. Um, You never know when there's going to be an opportunity for truth. We are to speak truth in love, but always stand up for truth when it comes to the Word of God. I'm going to get ready and get off here. Um, if there's anything else that the Lord puts on my heart, then I'll bring it forth. I'm going to continue to uh, spend time with him. I'm not on that fast anymore. And part of me is like sad because now I feel like, I don't, I don't know, just, I just, I like fasting because I like my, I feel like my connection with the Lord is even stronger, even though I hear him pretty good, even when I'm not fasting. So, um, but I'm going to continue spending time with the Lord. So if he brings anything else to me, but I just want you all to, um, I feel like I have been called to encourage the body of Christ. And I know today doesn't really seem like it was very encouraging, but we're almost out of here. You know, um, you see in the times I was reading revelation 18 and I just, when I read revelation 18, it's about the fall of Babylon. And it really looks like Babylon is being set up to fall. So I don't know if we're going out of here just as Babylon's getting ready to be taken down or what is going on. But go read Revelation 18. If you have not read it in a while, go and read it. Because it talks about the ships that are far off that are gonna watch us burn and they're gonna grieve because we're not they're not we're not buying their cargoes of crap anymore. Uh, so if you haven't watched it, go brush up on it. Or if you haven't read it in a while, go brush up on it and read it um, today and just meditate on it and just seek the Lord. Just just stay really close to him because at any second, he's going to come back for us and we all know it. So, all right. God bless you. Until next time.